Welcome to another edition of Wine Guide TV. Ben Edwards is my name. This is Dan Sims, and today we are in Shabley Heaven. Well, it comes as no surprise, and we've talked about this, how much we have a love affair with this particular region and style of wine. So we thought, you know what? Why don't we do a full episode on a few different producers, a couple of different vintages, and talk about the style of Chablis and why we love it so much. That's a good place to start. We have four wines here, two vintages, four, different, four very different styles. Yeah. Style, it's all about style. It's Sometimes about style. we forget about talking about that, you know, because within the Chablis genre, you're gonna have wines that are really light, crisp, finely detailed, and then you're also gonna have the ones that are more textual, fully, full and rich. And that can go for practically every single region when you look at it, and even for any particular variety. And I think the thing for me that I love about Chablis the most is that it sits in that sort of light to medium body spectrum, even though we're, we're talking Chardonnay, which is technically into that sort of fuller bodied spectrum of a variety. What I love about these styles is they're just really lovely and fresh and light. Great for lunch and wine. Yes, uh, Light to medium bodied in style, and again, that quality level all the way through with different types of quality levels, it's an interesting story. It is an interesting story. It is Chardonnay, you're mentioning that, but it's also from a very cool region, and so as a result, the wines are cool in character. So we'll start with a beautiful little minerally Bernard de Fay. Now, Petit Chablis. Yeah, well, Petit Chablis kind of sits in the, sort of, well, the bottom rung of the uh, Chablis hierarchy, so to speak. But this particular one, again, it's got, they've still got that lovely Chablis character. It probably doesn't have the depth and weight of those in the sort of higher levels. But for me, it's still got that really lovely sort of, you know, hint of, a hint of lemony citrus characters, some lovely sort of <laughs> fresh acid backbone. As, an, as a drink, it's approachable as an example of Chablis, ticking all the boxes. Yeah. It's a dry, chalky finish too, yeah. which we expect from Chablis. It is petty Chablis, it is entry level, it is under screw cap, and it is also 2009 vintage. Now 2009, while much hype for the rest of Europe, yeah. 2009 is what is going to be a forward, juicy kind of vintage for Chablis. And the classic vintages like 2008 are much more tightly wound, and we'll get onto that in a minute. How many points for Dan? 89. 89 points. 89 points because 89 I do, because I like it, because it's still ticking all those boxes, not pushing those high heights, but very well constructed and put together. It's got a really long, nutty sort of tone yeah. into the finish as well. It's, 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 a, not, <coughs> it's not inoffensive. Well, yeah, not but, offensive, I should say. Oh, it's inoffensive. Well, it is inoffensive, not inoffensive. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, let's move along. Christian Moreau, we're big fans of Christian Moreau. Superstar in the making, hasn't been around as a domain of its yeah. own for a long time. But the wines coming out from Christian Moreau are brilliant. 2008 wines were spectacular. This 2009 does show those richer, riper characters, mm. but still has the finesse and detail I expect from Christian Moreau. Exactly. I think that's, this is a really good example of the 2009 vintage, and especially, and this is literally only just been released. So this is only just coming onto the market right now. So, and that's off the back of that 08, which was super dry and fine. You're seeing that extra element of weight with this particular wine, pushing in that almost medium bodied spectrum yeah. in terms of Chablis but still <coughs> freshening up still got that classic backbone of acid and in terms of the classic idea of Chablis one of the things about Chablis was it always had this struck match kind of um, complexity you know like gun flint kind of yeah. you know somebody's just shot the gun I'm sure you do that all the time but you get this kind of complexity to it and that one has it and it's pretty interesting well <coughs> moving on now, anyone... We didn't give any points to that. Oh, we? any points? Yeah, I think we should give points. Let's see, we're going to make 92? 92 points. 92 points. It's a nice sort of example of style, yep. you know? Now, moving on. This one, Raveneau. Raveneau. I mean, anyone who drinks Chablis or knows anything about Chablis will know that Raveneau is, without doubt, one of the benchmark producers. This is a great opportunity to talk about this particular wine. It's rare as hen's teeth, really. It's, it's impossible to, to get. It's impossible to get. And sometimes we've got to put stuff like that on exactly. Wine TV so that people out there know that if they see it on a wine list or in a wine shop and they get an opportunity to buy a bottle of Raveneau, get they it. should do it because it is the absolute benchmark. Long family traditions, the way they make the wine, they build in a lot of texture, a lot of complexity. Vine age plays a critical part into how deep and complex these wines are, but this has that 08 raciness. It's got volume, it's got depth, but it's got raciness. And you know what? It's incredibly long. This is just an entry level, the AC Chablis. So just a village level, but in terms of weight, complexity, structure, again, that depth of flavour and length of flavour, it is absolutely super. It's beautiful. It's a it's look, 90, 94 points 
possibly, probably, probably even more. Uh, 94 points on day. Yeah. Well, because you've also got to put into context that if you looked at the Premier Crew, you'd exactly. probably be a point or two above, and then Grand Crew, you're hoping to go above. If you go too high from the start, <laughs> you've got nowhere to go. So let's leave it at 94. Really lovely drink. Super drink. Now, Gibo Peak mm. is a producer you don't see as much of, um, hasn't been around in Australia for so long. The Vogro is a Premier Crew vineyard, so it comes from a very specific vineyard, and whereas this would have come from a blend of different vineyards, this wine comes from one single vineyard, 08 again. The style of Gilbert Peak is a very tight mineral-y style and quite often I get a kind of greenness to the acidity, sort of like green apple to go with the lemon. Definitely green apple. But you get a little bit of this, don't you? I do and I quite, I quite like the wine. You know, in terms of you know, value, we talk about value a lot, this retailing around the $50 mark. Um, so in terms of for a Premier Cru wine around $50, that's pretty fantastic value. Um, the wine has still got that stuff, probably doesn't have that almost that, that extra element of weight and power, but in terms of that stylistic character, approachability, and I suppose ticking that boxes kind of thing, yeah. it's, a, it's a nice drink. I quite like it. You know, it's got just, it, it's actually opened up nicely in the yeah. glass. And when, you know, we have to look at these wines and give them points, and yes, we see them before today, but seeing this wine open and evolve, I think, you know, we were a little hard on our 90 points, and I reckon we can push it into sort of 92 points there, because it just is a lot longer and a lot more expensive. Exactly. The, the acid really backbone is structured to that. You really, it's building. It's, it's building, bloody satisfying. It's building, it's building, building. And I think that's the thing about Chablis, it's that satisfaction yep. that we're talking about, and especially why it's such a great lunch and wine in warmer weather. Um, just to have your glut, tick the boxes, it's refreshing, it goes with a range of different styles of food, and it's approachable. Now, in saying that, also we're seeing we've been banging on about Australian Chardonnay. We're starting to see again those again those Aussie Chardonnays pulling back and having that refreshing character. Chablis, I'm all about it. You are. I mean, you are literally all about <laughs> I am it. All about it. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a little lesson on Chablis. Hope you've enjoyed it. Get out there, drink plenty of it. Of course, support the good Australian stuff as well. But you know, sometimes it's nice to head on overseas. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.